Hello. Um, today, we're starting a new unit. So you should have taken a unit assessment uh, on Monday, hopefully. We got that figured out. Uh, if not, you should probably send me or uh, the sub an email or message on Teams because we need to figure something out for that, which we've not yet done. So um, there will be a retake for that like normal eventually. Don't know when that will be yet. Okay. But we're starting a new unit. And this unit is uh, all about exponential functions. We have two weeks until spring break. And so those two weeks are going to be uh, all about exponential functions. And then after spring break, we're going to do a little bit more with exponential functions, but then we're going to introduce logarithms, which are exponents, but they're a brand new thing that you have not seen or used before in algebra. Okay, so that that's going to be brand new. Some of this stuff, uh, hopefully you've seen before or heard of, maybe not. Uh, but it's really, this is a chapter that's really connected to our real life because it's intimately connected to the way that interest works, which affects things like loans, but also the stock market or um, a bank savings account or stuff like that. So investment has to do with interest, which is uh, partially an exponential function. It's an exponential function. Um, so we'll talk about all that kind of real world stuff later on. I might wait until after spring break. We'll see. Um, but we'll talk about taxes, I think, too, which is not related to this. But since we're talking about finances and stuff, eventually with the exponential function, we'll probably talk about that, too. So that's coming. But before we do that, uh, we want to talk about kind of the baseline just intro. So this unit is all about exponents, exponential functions, which means um, the variable is in the exponent. So before we were doing functions like x cubed, x to the fourth, some variable with a numerical exponent that doesn't change. Here, the exponent is the variable. I'm also talking about logarithms, which are exponents, and that'll come uh, a little bit in the coming weeks. Uh, we'll talk about using a calculator to evaluate them. Uh, but then we're going to do the majority of the work of that work after spring break. So there'll be a quiz today, and then a quiz right before spring break, and then the unit test will be after spring break sometime. All right, so what is a general, what is an exponential function? Well, the general form looks like this. Y, so we have some output. These are going to make coordinate points that we're going to graph. Y is some number, some constant number. This is going to be a number times some other number. This is going to be a number, uh, possibly a decimal here, possibly a decimal here too. Um, Especially when we talk, start talking about real-world examples, these probably won't be fractions, but they'll probably include a decimal, especially this number to the x. Okay, so y equals a b to the x. Uh, some rules here, or some information. A is not going to be zero because that would mean that y is just always zero. B is going to be it's positive real number um, and it's not going to be one if it was just one we would just get a constant sorry there we go so this is going to be a positive real number uh now you can make functions where this is negative but that's going to look crazy. So uh, I want to show you that. On Desmos. 
So let's say y equals, let's just do negative 2 to the x. Um, notice how there's not a graph here. There was, kind of, some dots and stuff. They all disappeared. There's not a graph here. It's not because negative number is impossible. You can do a negative number. Um, and you'll see there's this point on the graph. Uh, but, yeah, it doesn't show up. And that's because when we change this number, when we raise it, we're constantly switching back between real, um, imaginaries, and so the graph doesn't show up. So we're not going to do negatives here. It's not that these functions don't exist with negatives here. It's just we're going to pretend like they don't exist. Okay. And not 1, because if it was 1 then the function is just going to be whatever a is. y is going to be a. And so that's just a horizontal line. Uh, and if a is 0, then y is just always 0. And so that's not an interesting function either. OK, so we have some rules uh, for what we're going to see. Uh, Okay, and then we have two types, two cases. If b is bigger than 1, then we'll have an exponential growth. Is an exponential growth function. This is like the key phrase, exponential growth. Okay, so if b is bigger than 1, 1 1.2, 1 1.8, 1 1.75, 3, right, all those numbers are bigger than 1, including the decimals, then we have an exponential growth function. And that means that the function is going to grow as we increase x, as x gets bigger, the y values are going to also get bigger. Okay, and so these graphs are going to look like this. We have our coordinate plane. And then the function is going to start small down here, go through the y axis at some point, and then increase. Possibly steeper than that. Okay, these are going to go through uh, 0, 1. It just means if we put in 0 here for x, well, this turns into 1. Something to the 0 power turns into 1. Wait, now I'm confused. Oh, sorry. Not one here. This will be a. In the general form, if a is one, then it would be one. But uh, when we put zero into the function here, this b part turns into one because b to the zero is one, and so a times one makes a. So we're always going to have the coordinate point zero comma a. So if you're graphing this, you know the function. You could do zero comma whatever number this is, and then it's going to increase. There's a couple other points. Uh, 1 One will be whatever a times b is. Right, You put 1 in here, you get a times b, so that'll be whatever that is. And so on. Uh, if a is 1, then this is just 1 comma b, and this is 0 comma 1. But this graph goes up to the right, always. It doesn't ever cross 0. 
crosses the x axis. So the graph never like flips over because both of these numbers are positive and we're only changing the exponent. We're just changing by how many times we're multiplying a times b. We might multiply a times b a bunch of times. It might be b to the eighth and we have to multiply it eight times. That will never change the positive or negativeness of the numbers we're getting. They're always going to be positive. And even when we put in negative numbers in for x, this doesn't change to a negative. It changes to a fraction. If you remember back, I don't remember when we talked about that, last semester probably, when you put in negative numbers into the exponent, that makes a fraction. And so this just becomes a really small number. Not a negative number, just a really small number because we're dividing by b a bunch of times. Okay, so that's exponential growth. As we go to the right, usually this is as time increases, as time goes on, so we get bigger numbers here, the function goes up. It's gonna get bigger, it's growing. So if you put money in your bank account, it doesn't get negative unless you withdraw. If you just let it sit there, Interest will accumulate and it will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and grow exponentially. Now, not at a very fast rate, it's a low rate, but it's still exponential growth. Okay, there's another kind of function. What if b is smaller than one, still positive? So if uh, b is between zero and one, Still positive, but like 0 0.2, 0 0.02, 0 0.8, all those numbers are smaller than one. Every time we multiply a times b, we're going to get a smaller number. Well, then the function is an exponential decay function. It's decaying, it's getting smaller every time. This could be a population. It could be um, like cells dying. I'm trying to think of any other real world decay examples, but it's a, it's, uh, decaying exponentially, which means it's getting smaller every time, but it's not ever going to cross the x-axis. When we draw our decay function, it's going to have this curvy part, and then it's going to approach zero. It's never going to cross this x-axis. It's just going to get really close to it. Okay, so this coordinate point right here this is going to be 0, comma, a again. And uh, as we go to the left, as we put negative numbers into x, then we're going to get really big numbers because we're dividing by a decimal. Um, and as we put in really big numbers for x, because b is a small number like a quarter, 0.25, multiplied by 0.25 over and over and over, we're going to get really tiny numbers. So we get really tiny numbers. This also never crosses the x axis. Now, after spring break, we'll talk about transformations. You can shift these up and down, and then it would cross the x axis. Uh, you can flip it over if a is like a negative number. Um, and so it would go, you know, the other way. You could flip it this way too. And then it would, well, that would be like this. Um, and so you could change the function. You can transform it and shift it down so it does cross the x-axis. But just uh, y equals a times b to the x, this by itself does not cross the x-axis. You need like a plus c. Uh, we're not going to do that right now. So just two numbers and then an x. Okay, so growth 
goes up to the right, decay goes down to the right. Uh, and I want to look at this in a couple of ways. Uh, we're going to graph it by making a table. Uh, and we'll do a growth function and a decay function. And then we'll also check it on Desmos. Uh, yeah, so I need more. So graph the function. Determine if it is growth or decay. Now, normally, I would say I want you to use fractions. But for these decay functions, I actually want you to use decimals. Um, they're both correct. They're both work. The reason I want you to use decimals is because uh, a lot of like kind of the examples or more like word problems that we're going to do are going to use percentages, which are decimals, uh, like an interest rate would be a percentage. And so we translate that to a decimal. We would not use a fraction. You could you can s turn decimals into fractions, but sometimes they make more sense. They make a lot more sense as decimals. So it's easier to read them. Um, And so just the real world connection here means that we're gonna, it's gonna be easier to use decimals sometimes. Okay, but they both work. So our first one is going to be y equals two to the x. <clears throat> Oh, I forgot something. Well, let's go back here. B here is the base of the exponent. It's called the base. These have names. Um, B is the base. It's also known as for uh, growth. It's called the B is the growth factor. And for decay, B is the decay factor. This is how much it's growing and decaying by when we multiply over and over and over. Okay, it's also the base. Just like any exponent, it's the base of the exponent. Uh, so it's base of the exponential function. So the base here for our example is two. So identify the base is the first step. B equals two. That's what we're multiplying over and over and over. Our second thing we're gonna do is make a table. you're going to graph this by hand and you want coordinate points, if you want to be more accurate than just sketching, like plugging in a Desmos and guessing at where the curve goes, I'm going to make a table. So x is some number, y is some output, and we're going to plug numbers into this table. Now, where should we start? Generally, I would say, okay, start at zero, do all the positive numbers, but we want positive and negative numbers here. And so Usually when we're doing a table, do all the easy numbers. The easy numbers are negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Now sometimes we'll need more numbers than this to get an accurate look at what the what the curve is. Uh, but generally, especially for exponential functions, if you start at negative two and you go to positive two, you should have a pretty good idea of what it looks like. So then we just evaluate these numbers for this function. So if we're going to substitute 2 in here, we do 2 to the negative 2. There's a couple ways to figure this out. You just plug it into a calculator or Google uh, or something like that. Or 
remember, negative turns this into a fraction. So this is 1 over 2 squared. which is one to the fourth. Now I'm gonna write this over here. I'm not gonna write it here yet because I want you to see a pattern and the pattern doesn't really start at a quarter. That's fine. Uh, so then we would do two to the negative one. Same thing, plug it into a calculator or because it's negative, flip the fraction. One over two, this becomes one half. So it becomes a fraction gets rid of the, expo the negative and the exponent, and then we evaluate that exponent, so we get a half. Anything to the zero is always going to be one. There's no a value here, so this just becomes one. Two to the zero is one. Uh, two to the first is two. Only writing it twice, so all of our answers line up at the end here. Two squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. Now you should see a pattern. What is happening every time? We're just doubling it, right? This exponential function, 2 to the x, means every time x goes up 1, every time we go up 1, we are doubling the value. So we go from 1 to 2, we doubled. 2 to 4. The next number, doubles again, and again. So as we go up, as x increases, we're doubling, but as we go back down, as we go this way, as x decreases, so from two to one to zero to negative two to negative, I mean from negative one to negative two, we're dividing by two each time. So we get a quarter, a half, we get one, we get two, we get four. No, we don't. You know, you should notice, we don't get zero here. We're never going to get zero, zero. Uh, I say that, and then you can always shift the function down to go through zero, zero. But we're not shifting the function. If it's just an exponential, it doesn't go through zero, zero. All right? So we uh, found our factor, our growth factor. This is a growth factor because it is bigger than one. Unless the function's getting bigger as we go. And now we just plot all these coordinate points. Now we just plot the coordinate points. So um, that's gonna look like, plot the points, x-axis, and uh, our points were 0 comma 1, so maybe that's there, uh, 1 comma 2, maybe that's there, 2 comma 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm not going to do all these 8 and 16, it's going to get huge. Uh, but then we had negative 1 and a half, we're just going to have to kind of get close, and then negative 2 and a quarter. So. Our curve never crosses this x-axis, but it gets really close, and then it gets really big really quickly and goes up. Now, is this a growth function or a decay? Well, from left to right, going this way, it's growing, so that's a growth function. We also know that because 2 is bigger than 1. So the base was bigger than 1, so it's growing every time we multiply. It's also going up to the right. Okay. Let's do one more of those. Okay, so these are the same thing, 1 half to the x power or 0.5 to the x power uh, to the x. I think because we're going to make a table here, this one's actually easier because we're going to be multiplying by half every time. But if you're using a calculator or something, the 0.5 is definitely going to be easier.
it's probably still needs to be in parentheses. Um, what this is saying is as x increases, we're going to be multiplying by 0.5 every time. Okay, so our b value is 0.5, which means this is not a growth factor. This is a decay factor. That's because 0.5 is between 0 and 1. It's not negative, but it's smaller than 1. So that's a decay factor. The function's going to get smaller every as x gets bigger, because we're multiplying by a half every time. And we're just going to make our table. So you could do a horizontal or vertical table. doesn't matter. I still like starting uh, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. You may need to do more numbers to get a good idea. Um, and for this, I would definitely use a calculator because the um, negative exponents get a little weird when we're doing fractions. But we're doing 1 half to the negative 2. You could put that in a calculator or just flip the fraction and get rid of the negative exponents. This becomes 2 squared. That might look really strange. Um, but what we're doing is we're taking 1 half, we're really making that over 1, and then we're flipping and multiplying to get 2, and then we're squaring it. So this is 4. Uh, we'll also look at the pattern. The pattern should make sense. Okay, we're starting at 4 here, and we're going to multiply by a half every time. As x gets bigger, we're multiplying by a half. So a half of 4, we should get 2 as our next answer. And then we should get 1. And then we should get a half. And then half of a half is a quarter. Okay? Now, what actually is this algebraically? Well, it's 1 half to the negative 1. We flip that fraction, and that's 2. Anything to the 0 is 1. Anything to 1 is itself, which is still a half. 1 half squared is a half times a half, which is a quarter. So with exponential functions, we're just multiplying repeatedly that base over and over and over. And so we're multiplying by half each time. So the numbers are getting cut in half. 4 and a half is Half of 4 is 2, half of 2 is 1, half of 1 is a half, half of a half is a quarter. And then we get an eighth and a sixteenth. These numbers should all look familiar. They're the same values that we used before, just their, flip, their fractions are flipped over. Instead of 1 quarter, it's 4 over 1. So we get 4, 2, 1, 1 half, and a quarter. Which means our graph... Our graph starts at 1 comma 0 again, 0 comma, 0 comma 1, not 1 comma 0, 0 comma 1. Um, and then the negative numbers are going to see the increase. So negative 1 comma 2, negative 2 comma 4, and 1 comma a half, 2 comma a quarter. So the graph starts large. I didn't actually go through the points, so that's not the best, but the curve's pretty close. Never crosses zero, but gets very tiny. Right? As x gets really big, we're multiplying a half over and over and over and over. We get really, really tiny decimal numbers or fractions. Okay, so as we go from left to right, this is not a growth function. This is a decay function. The ways to know if something is growth or decay is the shape of the graph. Or if the b value, the base of the exponent, the number under the x, is it bigger than 1 or smaller than 1? If it's smaller than 1, well, we're multiplying by a fraction over and over and over, so we get decay. If it's bigger than 1, we're multiplying by a big number, or a number bigger than 1, over and over, and so it gets bigger every time. Now, the fraction might be really small. It might be 0 0.9. 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 
0.99999 like for a really long time and it's still getting smaller every time but not very quickly it's still decay it's just not very fast or uh, exponential growth might be very slow it might be 0.1.00001 so it's going up very slowly but it's still exponential so this like dramatic curve to up to the right might not happen unless we zoom really far out or go really far to the right in really big numbers still exponential just the curve is steeper shallow okay that's how to graph it use a table or you just plug it into desmos right we just go over here to desmos and we say okay my function was y equals 2 to the x power. Goes through 0 comma 1, goes through 1 comma 2, goes through 2 comma 4, and so on and so on. It's this nice curve. And gets really big really quickly. If you put 150 into here, you're going to get a huge number. Huge. So exponentials get very big very quickly, or very small very quickly, depending on if it's growth or decay. If we switch this to uh, 0.2 or even just 0.5, well, now it's getting tiny to the right. It'll never cross the x-axis here. All right, I want you to see the sliders. Uh, we're just going to leave this as... Uh, uh, a value of 1. That's not changing. So you'll notice as it goes to the negative, it blips out. But the um, positive numbers from 0 to 10 here, it always goes through this 1, comma, or 0, comma 1. It's rotating through this point. Or it's a negative, so it disappears. But the that point right there doesn't change. It only changes if we add something to the end here. So like plus three. Well, now it's shifted up three. Now it's up here. Uh, which we're not going to do for a while. Or you might have an A value and a multiplier. And so that moves it up two. It doesn't shift the graph. It stretches it, right? Or we might have 0.5 or something. And now it's shallower. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about different A values and different B values as we go. Okay, am I missing anything? <sighs> yes, we like to write B um, in terms of a rate. terms of a rate. Okay, so this would be like, I just like I've got $100 in the bank, how much would I have after 10 years? That kind of idea, that model, that real world modeling something growing in real life. Okay, it's like, um, when a new organism is created, like a like a baby or something, or like a plant, it starts from one cell, and then there are two cells. And now this is not strictly exponential because we stop growing at some point, uh, but it begins as an exponential curve. So it starts with one cell, that cell divides into two, those two cells divide into four, and those four cells divide, each divide, and so that makes eight, and then 16, and then 32, uh, and so on and so on, right? The cells are each dividing. So we're doubling every time. Uh, we would want to write that rate as y equals a times 1 plus the rate times to the power of the time. OK, 
Okay, and it, that would be growth. We're adding, we're starting at one and we're increasing it by whatever the rate is. Um, or decay, start at one and we subtract whatever the rate is. So the rate is gonna be a percentage. So this isn't ever going to be a negative number. It's not ever gonna be negative, but it will decrease this number to be smaller than one, right? Because one minus like 0.2 or something. Okay, some notes. A is the initial value. So if you started with $1,000 and you had a rate of 0 0.01, which would be not amazing, but also not awful, you'd put 1,000 here, put 0 0.01 here, and then how many how many years down the line do you want to check? Would be the time. So R is the rate. Could be a negative rate. It's going to be a percentage. It's negative. You put it in this number. It's decreasing. And T is just time. It's going to be a whole integer number. So we have some initial starting value, like a car. We paid this much money for it, it's worth this much, and it's depreciating, which means it's worth a little less every year. I bought it new for this much money and it's worth a little bit less every year. So I have some initial starting value, how much it was worth. It's decreasing by some rate. And how many years in the future do I wanna check? Well, this lot. So let's actually do one of those. So these are still exponential functions. I'm just gonna look a little different. So we have a car. Value of the car. Not care, car. Um, is 2,500. It's depreciating, or not is, was, this is how much we bought. It's a cheap car, 2,500 is not a ton for a car. Uh, it's depreciating by 15%. Wanna know a couple things. Is it growing or decaying? And B, when will the value be eight thousand dollars. Oh, not sorry, not eight thousand, eight hundred dollars. And when or how much will the car be worth in I don't know seven years? Now we're gonna need a calculator. Gonna need a calculator. So a couple things. We gotta write the equation. Okay. We have an initial value. It was worth this much when it was first purchased. Two thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, so y is gonna equal two thousand five hundred. That's our initial value. So a is two thousand five hundred. B is one minus this 15%. It's depreciating, it's going down. So we have 100% minus 15%. But we need it as a decimal. It's not one minus 15, we're not gonna get negative 14. We gotta change this to a decimal. So we take uh, 15 
do this over here. Decimals here, we move it over twice. So it's 1 minus 0.15. Or, sorry, yeah, 1 minus 0.15. And then we have the time. So we have an equation. So this growing or decaying? Well, let's simplify this part. So it's y equals 2,500 times 0.85 for t. It's decaying. This is decay. Because this number right here is less than 1. 0.85. We're multiplying by 0.85 every time. It's going to get smaller. When will the value be 800? We don't currently have a way to calculate that specifically. We will eventually. So we're asking for part B, when is 800 equal to 2,500 times 0.85 to the T? What exponent value do we need right here for this to be 800? There's a way to do that algebraically. We're not going to do that. We're just going to graph it and look. We're just going to graph it and look. We haven't talked about logarithms. You would need a logarithm to figure that out. We're not going to do that right now. We just want to know, okay, if this is 25 and this is 2,500, when will the y value be 800. So see my curve here? Over 50 years, so every one is a year. After 50 years, my car will be worth 73 cents. Now that's not true. Oh, you can't see that. 50 years here. 73 cents. 74 cents if we round up. Now that's not how the real world works because the car is always worth however much you can get for the scrap metal or the parts, there's like a baseline value that it's not gonna drop below. Car's not ever gonna be worth 73 cents, I don't think. But we wanna know, when is it gonna be 900? And we're not gonna get exact, because we're just looking at the graph, but it's pretty close to 6.825 years. See, the y value there is 900, and the x value is 6.285. So after 6.285 years, which is like um, two years and four months, pretty close to a third. Three months would be 0.25 quarter. So, yeah. So right here. So yeah, we had to zoom way out and scroll way up because this is a big function. It started at 25,000. All right, so after 0.825 years, 6.285 years, it'll be worth $100. You've lost money. That's the thing about cars. They're worth a little less. If somebody's going to buy it used, they're not going to pay how much you bought it for off the lot. They're going to, it's got wear and tear. It's old. It's not as good as it was. And you'll notice that slope, that curve, get, is really steep at first, and then it starts like slowing down. Those first few years, you've owned it for two years, it's going to, the, the drop off in value is uh, really pronounced. It's really big. But eventually, you know, the difference between a 20-year-old car and a 19-year-old car, not really that much, but a difference between a 1-year-old car and a 2-year-old car is kind of a lot in terms of resale value. Okay, so then our third question was, how much will the car be worth in 7 years? So that's easy because we're just plugging in T equals 7. So for part C, T is 7. So we do y is 2,500 times 0.85 
to the seventh. Do not do this by hand. Do not multiply 0 0.8 to 0.85 seven times. Do not do this. Don't multiply that by hand. It, it will take forever. It's not impossible. It's just not worth your time. Use a calculator. Use a calculator like Desmos or Google. So we want to know what this function is when x is 7. So we can just type in 2,500 times 0.85 to the seventh, and it tells us, well, it's actually pretty close to the 800 number. Y is gonna be 801 point, don't write all the decimals, just do like four. Uh, and in this case, it doesn't even really make sense to do four because it's dollars. So we got uh, 801.4427, really. This is 801.44, just round down for the dollars. But uh, I like to keep four decimal places worth of information. Okay, so we know two things from this problem. We knew an initial value, the starting point, A, and then we know the rate. And we use the rate to find B to write our function and solve for some things. Eventually, we'll figure out how to solve for this number, or know this number, find the time. We'll do that eventually. Uh, but for now, uh, the only calculation I expect you to do is, is really this. And you should be using a calculator for that. Okay. So you're going to take a quiz. Uh, and that quiz is four questions. And it's just identifying wh whether something's growth or decay from the function, okay? Um, no homework this week because of the test and the quiz, uh, but then we'll have homework next week. All right, so that's an introduction to exponential functions. Uh, they're multiplying something over and over multiple times, and so we get either really big growth or really big decay. Function gets either really big or really tiny. We have a base and an initial value. The initial value is A. That's 0, comma a, that's our starting point for the, the graph or for uh, the function. And b is the number we're going to multiply over and over and over by. And so if that number is bigger than 1, the function grows because we're multiplying by 2 over and over, and so we get really big numbers. Or if it's smaller than 1, multiplying by a fraction or a decimal, and so it's getting smaller every time because we're multiplying by a tinier number. So it decays. All right, so that's our introduction to exponential functions.